Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. This tutorial is an add-on to the Flash Photo Gallery tutorial that is available right now. And what we're going to be looking at is adding these next and previous buttons to this photo gallery. Here's how it works. You can see we can select the photo, we select this photo, go to the next photo, or we can just go back through the photos or we can use the next button to cycle up through what we've got coming up, or we can go back to the thumbnails and just view using the thumbnails. Now, we already have all these thumbnails set up, so that's all available. So we don't have to worry about setting that up. We're gonna take a look at setting up the next and previous buttons. I'm gonna close this down, and I'm gonna go open up the file that does not have the next and previous buttons. And if you don't have that file, well, go follow the photo gallery, flash photo gallery tutorial that I have and when you create this photo gallery then we will look at implementing these next and previous buttons so here I just open up this photo gallery file which is the file that you ought to have something similar to if you've created this photo gallery tutorial first thing we need to do is you can see we have this layer here master clip MC I'm going to double click into that movie clip and inside of this movie clip we have four layers control action script, thumbs action script, the thumbs and the photos first thing we're going to do is create a new layer for the next and previous buttons so select the thumbs layer and hit the new layer button double click on the layer name and let's call this next prev or next or previous there we go we've got a layer for the next and previous buttons let's draw two arrows grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a thin rectangle, just like that. Bright green is fine, it's something that's easy to see, but if you're creating this for maybe use on the web somewhere, you might want to consider uh, creating arrows that look somewhat decent. Then grab the Poly Star tool and open up your Properties panel and select the Options. This is the Poly Star Options. We're going to set the style to Star, number of sides to 3 and the point size to let's try 1.2 hit OK and let's see what we've got that's pretty close to being an exact triangle that's good enough so now we're going to grab our selection tool and select that triangle then grab our free transform tool and I'm just going to rotate it use shift to constrain yourself to the straight so it is an exact triangle pointing to the one side alright then we're just going to place it over our green rectangle and because the, rec the rectangle and triangle are both the same color they kind of automatically merge just like that we have our arrow alright I'm going to select this arrow and I'm going to hit whoops, edit copy edit paste in place and then I'm just going to use shift and I'm going to rotate this again just flip it all the way over and I'm just going to drag it out to the side and hold down shift so you just drag it straight out just like that all right, the other thing I'm going to do is select both of these, and I'm just going to go to Modify, Transform, Scale, and Rotate. And I'm going to scale these, make them about 65% of the size they are now. So hit OK. And you can see they're significantly smaller now. All right, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to hit F8. Convert this thing to a symbol. We're going to convert it to a button symbol. And we're going to call this Next underscore BTN. I'm going to select this one over here. Hit F8 again. Convert it to a symbol. And this is going to be Previous underscore BTN. Great. Now we want to drag these up and place them to the sides of our thumbs. Just like that's fine. Okay, I'm going to give each of these an instance name. This one we're going to call prev underscore BTN. That's P-R-E-V underscore BTN. And this one is going to be called next underscore BTN. There we go. We have our buttons and they have instance names now. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is come up here to the Control Action Script layer and select that keyframe. Now, if you follow this tutorial, you have this bit of code there right now. What we need to do is create some variables first. So, let's hit the Enter Return key a couple times and type the word var. Now, type the word photo1. This is the name of our variable, photo1. Now, type a colon and type the word boolean. That's boolean with a capital B. All that means is this variable's data type is a boolean. 
which and boolean data by the way is just true or false it either means yes or no so in flash terms that's either true or false so we're going to give this the, the initial value of false semicolon okay and we need to make a variable for each one of our photos so we're going to do this and just say false and then I can just select both of these lines right click copy and enter return a couple times and control or command V to paste and then just switch this to photo 3 switch that to photo 4 and we just need one more var photo 5 it is boolean and the initial value is false so there we go we've just set up five variables one for each of our photos now what we need to do is make it so when any one of these photos is selected its variable switches to true so we're going to come into the photos movie clip, select the photos, and then select your selection tool. And you can see that you've got this dot with this little plus going through it in the center of your screen. You're going to have to double click on that little dot to get inside of this photos movie clip. And here we are inside of the photos movie clip. And we don't really need to see the stage right now. We need to focus more on the timeline up here. We have all these tweens, which are our photos fading in. Now what we need to happen is when image one starts to play, we need its variable to switch to true. So we're going to come right above the image one frame label and hit F6. F6 places a new blank keyframe. And on that keyframe, we need to place this. We need to say var, oh, not var, excuse me, photo one equal true. But we also need to bear in mind that we're going to need to be canceling out the rest of the variables. So what I need to do is just to check and make sure that none of the other variables are selected, or we need to make sure none of the other variables equal true. We need to make sure all of these equal false. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste one for photo three, photo four, and photo five. So I'm going to say photo three, photo four, and photo five. So what's happening here is when Flash starts to play right here, this image one frame label, and plays until it hits this stop action up here. It is setting photo one, the variable photo one, to equal true for the time being, and making sure that photo two through five all equal false. So let's copy this whole bit of code, and we need to add this above each of our frame labels. So select above image two, and place a keyframe, and right click, and hit paste. And now switch photo one from true to false, and just switch photo two to true. So now it's just making sure photo two equals true and everything else equals false. Let me move this down. Let's throw a keyframe in above image three. Paste all of that in. Now select photo three. Set that to true. And make sure photo one is set to false. And we just need to do that with each of these remaining images here. False and photo four now has to equal true. And now above image five, hit F6 and paste that in. Be sure that photo five is set to true. So now each time the timeline gets advanced to this, whatever keyframe, be it image one, image two, image four, image three, whatever that specific image is going that the variable that we have sort of attached not really attached to that image just referring to that image is going to switch to true okay so we're going to use that information in an if statement here so I'm gonna hit this back arrow here or just double click anywhere on my stage and now we're back here we need to go back to the control action script layer and I'm going to open up my actions panel okay here is where we're going to set up what is called an if state statement excuse me and this is going to be saying if photo one equals true we want you to do whatever but we want you to do this when prev underscore btn is released so we're going to say prev btn dot on release equals function open and close parenthesis open curly bracket enter enter close curly bracket hit the up arrow key and tab Okay, and here we're going to say if open parenthesis photo one equals equals you have to put two equal signs true close parenthesis open curly bracket enter return twice close curly bracket up arrow key and here we want you to go inside of photos MC and photos MC 
is this photos movie clip here if I select it you can see that it's called photos MC and let me go back to control action script once you inside photos MC and go to and play open close parenthesis and in here put an open quote if photo dot want or if photo one equals true we want you to go to the previous photo which would be IMG5 and play that okay and then place a semicolon there all right let's just test this out and see what happens I'm I can think of one problem right off the top of my head but let's see what happens let's close this and move this out of the way command enter or control enter and here's our photo gallery alright I'm going to select image one so now technically photo one should equal true let's hit the previous button and see what happens well nothing's happening I'll show you why it's because photo one actually does not equal true we need to go back inside of the photos here and we need to come into our actions panel and select here we just say photo one equal true so it's looking around here on this timeline for photo one well, photo one does not exist on this timeline. So what we need to do is type underscore parent dot photo one. All right, now here's a quick time saving tip. Instead of going through and redoing all of those, here's what we're going to do. We are going to come over, select this little menu and hit find and replace. And we want to find the letter P and we want to replace it with underscore parent dot P. So this is going to find that letter P starting photo and just replace it with underscore parent dot P. So we're just going to hit replace all and it found and replaced five items. I'm just going to close this down and you can see we quickly have underscore parent on all of them. Let's select this here and do the same thing. Find and replace and you can see it's already in there so we can just hit replace all. Close that. Select the next one. Find and replace. Replace all. And we can Oops, close that. Select the next one. Find and replace. Replace them all. And then above image 5, we're going to find and replace and just replace all of them. Okay, let's close that down. Now let's test it out and see what happens. Well, real quick, let's just take a look at what exactly this is doing here. This underscore parent bit of code is just saying go to the next highest movie clip or the movie clip right behind me in the stacking order of movie clips if you recall we set all these variables photo one two three and four and five up here in master movie clip we set them up here on the control action script layer right here but we are inside of this photos MC movie clip so we just need to tell the action script hey look in the movie clip that is the parent of this movie clip the movie clip that is containing this movie clip look in that for photo one and make it true. Let's publish this movie and see what happens. Now when I select photo one, I can hit the previous button and it goes back to photo five. Now if I hit the previous button now, nothing's going to happen because I don't have it scripted to do anything yet. But at least we know that it actually works. Let's go back to the control action script layer and quickly set up the rest of this. All right, here we are. We have this if statement, this curly brace, and this curly brace are holding this photos.mc dot go to and play. So after this curly brace here, this one, not this one here, this one, hit space and write else if. What we're saying here is if photo one equals true, we want you to go and play this. But if photo one does not equal true, photo one equals false, we want you to do something else. And what we want you to do is check to see if something else is true. And that is if photo two equals true. And if photo two equals true, like that open curly brace, oops, enter return twice, close curly brace, up arrow key. We want you to go photos mc dot go to and play. And here we want you to go image one. Make sure you hit image one. Closed parenthesis, semicolon. So if photo two equals true, if we've selected photo two, we just want you to go back to image one. And then another else if statement, else if photo three equals true, open curly bracket, enter return twice, close curly bracket, and then photos mc dot go to and play image two. Make sure you place that semicolon. And then create the rest of these else if statements. I'm going to create them real quickly here, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I'm back. I have created all the rest of these else if statements. You can just take a quick look at them. Basically, if photo one equals true, we want you to do something. But if photo one doesn't equal true, check to see if photo two equals true. If that doesn't equal true, check photo three. If that doesn't equal true, check photo four. If none of these equal true, the previous button will just do nothing, which is fine because if we don't have any of our photos selected, we don't have any photos that we've been viewing yet. So that's perfectly fine. Now remember also here we have our variables up top and we have this little photos mc dot on press makes the photo just go to the next photo. Okay so that is the previous button. Let's just test that to make sure they all work. Come up here to control test movie. Here is our photo gallery. Let's select one of these photos right in the middle and hit previous. Here's the baseball image. You can see that is the second image. That swampy image was the third. We can go to the previous image, and the previous image, and the previous image, and the previous image. Or we can click the image and go to the next image. Click the image and go to the next image. Or we can just select one of the thumbnails. Okay, so let's quickly script the next button. This is going to be pretty easy. In the control action script layer, okay, we've got all this code. We're going to copy all this code from the previous button, dot on release. Copy the entire thing. Right click, copy. Hit enter or return several times. And paste it. Command or Control V. And just switch prev to next. So now we're going to say next button dot on release. If photo one equal true, we want you to go to and play image two. And at image two, we want you to go to and play image three. And at image three, we want you to go to and play image four. At image four, we want you to go to and play image five. And when you get to image five, when the person hits the next button, we want you to play image one again. So it's going to cycle through all the images just like we want it to. Let's just move this off screen and check to see what happens. When I select the baseball image, I can hit the previous image, which takes me back to the French horn image. I can hit the next image, which takes or the next button, excuse me, which takes me up to the baseball image. Next, 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 previous, previous. And that's how you do it. There are some previous and some next buttons for our photo gallery. Basically all it is, it's the previous button, check and see if that variable equals true, and if it equals true, it is playing the image that's previous to it in that timeline we set up right in here inside of photos. It's just calling to the frame labels, image 5 is the frame label at which image 5 starts to display. So that's what's going on here, and next button is simply doing the same exact thing, except instead of choosing image 5, which would be the image before photo 1, it's choosing image 2, which is the next image. That's how you do it, and that is how you create next buttons and previous buttons for your photo gallery. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching.